What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream from the Scalar Learning Channel. And today is a very, very exciting day. Uh, if you guys have seen the title of this video, guess what? We are onto a brand new official College Board practice test for the new digital SAT. And this is very exciting because I love doing these tests and it gives us a lot of great insight into what the tests are going to look like after the fact. You know, what? how's the test evolving? All these great things. Now, there have been four up to date so far that I've taken. And when I take them, <clears throat> as you guys know who have seen the channel before, I take them for the first time in real time, meaning I'm giving you an authentic test taking experience. I'm not reviewing it ahead of time and then checking and then doing that thing. I'm trying to take it as if I were a student. So you can see me think on my feet, maybe get, maybe stumble a little bit, maybe even make some mistakes, who knows, right? But the idea is you get that authentic test taking experience and then you can learn from that. See how I think, see how I adapt, because I'm gonna talk through it as I reason through it all in real time, okay? So we're gonna do that today, and again, I'm so excited. I already started this practice test. This is a practice test five, it's already running, but obviously I'm gonna skip the verbal part, so I just wanted to talk about that. The other reason why this is very exciting is because for students of mine who took the most recent March SAT, which was the first ever administered digital SAT, we definitely heard some people talking about the math portion being harder than the, what they experienced on the practice test. Now, I don't know if that's true or false, right? Because I haven't, they, I tried to register for the test, but I wasn't able to take it. So I don't know. And none of us who are, who are teachers and tutors have actually, I think, been able to see the, the real digital SAT, but I did hear that and I heard a lot of students saying that. But this will give us some good insight, right? Because this it's a brand new practice test. Hopefully it's more in line with whatever, however the test might be slightly uh, evolving or micro evolving. So anyways, without further ado, I'm very excited to take this test. We're going to do it with me and I uh, hope you guys like it. And if you do like it, make sure to click that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to click subscribe. By the way, the uh, last thing I want to say is if you are interested in the best practice resources available for this test for the digital SAT, make sure to look in the description link below. Go to the SATcrashcourse.com. Use code SCALAR, S-C-A-L-A-R, all caps, for a 20% discount, uh, and that's the best way to prepare. You wanna do loads of practice tests, they have 10 up there. Plus, they got video explanations from me. We partnered, we put it together, we built it together, and it is top notch, in my opinion, best resource out there, period. I can't take credit for the platform, right? They built that, but I can take credit for the video explanations, which I do feel like are very, very helpful uh, in my teaching style. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's do, we're gonna do module one today. So we're gonna skip the reading section, boop. Let's skip that. And then I'll do module two maybe tomorrow or maybe over the weekend, but stay tuned for that. And I may do practice test six closer to the May SAT. I haven't decided just yet. All right, we're gonna skip this one. This is the second one. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna get a zero there. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so excited. Let's check it out. Resume, boom, and we're in. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and we got a whiteboard up here. I'll use that if need be to get this set up. Timer's already running, but we're gonna get it going now. Okay, there we go. Three, two, one. Veterinarian recommends that each day a certain rabbit should eat 25 calories per pound of the rabbit's weight. 25 calories per pound of the rabbit's weight. So if it's one pound, 25, two pounds, 50, etc. <clears throat> plus an additional 11 calories. So 25 per weight plus an additional 11 pounds, where C is the total number of calories the vet, the vet recommends. So C would equal this. So which one of the following if X, if they weigh X pounds? So again, I basically wrote it out, it's C. But just so, it's just so that makes sense, once again, if, if they weigh two pounds, this makes sense. Two times 25, so 25 per pound, so that'd be 50 pounds, so it's 11 to 61, boom, done, next. All right, number two, a special camera is used for underwater ocean research. Cameras uh, at a depth of 39 fathoms. What is the depth in feet? This is straight conversion problems. You can use a calculator if you want, but it's saying one fathom is equal to six feet. So we got a proportion here, and now we've got 39 fathoms is equal to X amount of feet. Now we can cross multiply. X equals six times 39. Again, you can use Desmos. I'm gonna do it mentally. 30 times six is 180, plus six times nine is 54. So that's 234. A is the winner. Let's make sure I didn't miss anything. In feet, 39, yeah, it's got to be 234, boom, done. <clears throat> Excuse me, number three, in the figure line, MS parallel on N, K parallel, okay, which of the following statements are true? Here, let's bring this over here so I can actually write on it a little bit. So there we go. And the value of X, well, here, 
I'll tell you what X is. This, this is a vertical angle. That means X is exactly equal to 145. So it's not less, it's not greater, it's equal to, that's it. No other questions, boom, done. Number four, <clears throat> as a function in dollars of attending an arcade game when X games are played, how many games can we play for a total of 58? Okay, total is represented by the function value, so I'm gonna plug in 58, and we've got 14 plus 4X, and what we're doing is we're solving for X. That's the number of games, which is represented by X. So I'm gonna minus both sides by 14, boom, boom. And I got 44, I'm doing mental math, is equal to 4x, divide by 4, and x equals 11. Okay, so the answer is 11. Now, another way you could have done this is we could have graphed it in Desmos, right? 14 plus 4x. <clears throat> and we're looking for when y is equal to 58. So this is another tactic we can use. We can look for that intersection point on Desmos, and we see, once again, it's 11 for the x value. That's how you do it. All right. Number five, what is the value of x minus seven? So this is a one that's really nice because if I just take this equation as is, right? Four x minus 28 equals negative 24. You can solve for x and then be like, what's x minus seven? Or you can be like, wait a minute. They kind of gave me a clue here because if I divide everything by both sides by four, I get x minus seven is equal to negative six. And that's what they're asking for, x minus seven. So x minus seven is negative six. C is the winner done. Okay, next. The amount of Hannah's bill for food order was $50. Hannah gave a tip of 20% of the amount of the bill. What is the amount of the tip? All right, so it's just 20% of 50. You can do that in the calculator or by hand. 0.2 times 50 is 10, okay? But, but again, you can use the calculator if need be. But anyways, the value of the tip is $10. Boom, done. Now notice it didn't say what's the total value of the bill. It could have. Then it would have been 10 plus 50, but here it's just 10. All right. Five, blah, 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 whatever. That's a, who cares about the name. The uh, six nest, here, let's write this out. So we're gonna take a screenshot and we're gonna pop it over here. And then it says the sixth one has 121. Let's call that F, I don't know. Which of the following correctly compares the means of the two data set? Oh, got it, okay. Mm, let's calculate it. So first we're gonna calculate the mean. And watch, you can use this really cool function. So I'm gonna type in the values, 149 comma, one, obviously mean we're just adding them up and dividing by five, but this one's pretty cool. 136 and 139. All right, so here's the current mean of these four values. And we wanna know how does this new value, oops, oh, that's right, they disabled the copy and paste. So here, let's write this down. So the current mean is 143.2. Obviously this is lower than the current mean, which means it's gonna lower the mean, but we can actually get the exact value just for fun. So now it's gonna be the new one is 139.5. Okay, so the new mean is gonna be lower. Let's see, the mean of the original data set is greater. Yes, that's true. The mean of the original data set is less. No, it's not true, they're not equal, and that's that. Wait, the only way I would say it's not enough information if there's more than these nests that are presented, hold on. Yeah, we're good. Okay, number eight. The shader region shows the solution to which inequality? All right, so first of all, the shading is above the dotted line. That means it should be Y is greater than. So I already know, here, I'm gonna show you how to cross these out. It's pretty cool. So A and B saying Y is less than Y is less than, wrong. It should be Y is greater than because it's shaded above that line. And then the question is, which one of these two is it? It's gotta be D, and I'm gonna tell you why. This line has a negative slope. 3x would be a positive slope going this way. So it's gotta be D, but now I'm gonna prove it to you and you can verify this in Desmos, check this out. Y is greater than negative one minus three X. And what you see is we, you know, obviously we need to zoom in, but you see now we get that exact line, right? It looks identical, that's how you do it, done. All right, next. Number nine, which expression is equivalent to this? All right, just combining like terms. Let's write it out here on the whiteboard. So we got 8x cubed plus 8. When we have a minus in front of the parentheses, we distribute it. So we got minus x cubed and plus 2 because the negative and the negative cancel out. Now we're going to combine like terms, combine like terms. 8 minus 1, invisible 1 there, is 7x cubed. Remember, if there's no coefficient, still assume it's a 1. It's always invisible, chilling. 8 plus 2 is 10. 7x cubed plus 10 for the win. Boom, done. All right. Next, oops. Number 10, the xy plane line t passes through point zero nine one. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we got two points. We're gonna come with the equation of the line. Let's do so now. Now, another thing we could do is we could just go through and plug in zero nine one seventeen to all the choices. Whichever one both of the points work for, that's the winner, but let's do it old school. Oh, by the way, and that's also the y-intercept. So I already know my y-intercept, which is b, is nine. But now let's calculate the slope. 
So I like to stack the coordinates, 117, 0, 9. And we're going to subtract down. 17 minus 9 is 8. 1 minus 0 is 1. And this is rise over run. So we got a slope of 8 over 1. So to get my equation in slope-intercept form, it's y equals m, which is slope, which is 8, times x plus b. 8x plus 9 is the winner. Boom, done. Now we're going to double check. Plug in 0, we get 9. Plug in 1, we get 17. Double verified. That's how you do it. Number 11. And again, module 1, you're going to notice we're going to finish probably with a lot of extra time because this is going to be the easier version of the two modules. What is the solution to the given equation? All right. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to add 7 to the other side. Then I got d minus 30 times d plus 30. And the reason why this is amazing is because I get 0. When I get 0, oh, that's supposed to be like that. When I get 0 over here and this is factored, I can use zero product rule. My two solutions are gonna be whatever zeros out this and whatever zeros out that. So it's gonna be positive 30 and negative 30. So they said, what is a solution to the given equation? You could do either and you'll probably get credit for both. I'm gonna do positive 30. But, but notice the digital SAT does take negative answers. The old one did not, so just FYI. Number 12, store cells, two different size containers. The blueberry stores and the blueberries are totaled 896. Hold on, 896.86. The equation, blah, 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 represents the x number of smaller containers. Y is the number of larger containers. According to the equation, what is the price of, dollars in the, of the smaller? Okay, so here's the dealio, right? If we've got this equation, 4.51x plus 6.07y. So they said x is the number of small containers. Y is the number of large containers. So since this is sales, this is money, okay? X and Y are quantities. To turn those quantities of like numbers of containers into money, we're gonna be multiplying by the price per small, price per large, because that's the only way we can have that conversion, right? One container would be 451, two containers would be uh, $9.02, et cetera. And each large one. So, th so what we can see from this, this is an interpretation question. What we can see from this is the coefficient in front of the quantity is actually the price per amount. Okay. So that means if we want to know the price of each small containers, that coefficient 451, that's how you do it. Boom, done. Okay. Whoops. Almost had a typo there. All right. Number 13. Here we go. Function F models the intensity of an X-ray beam. T millimeters surface sample iron according to the model was the estimated number of particles when this at the surface. Okay. So at the surface, the question is that. What does that mean, right? And at the surface, this is saying T is the number of millimeters below the surface. So when would T be at the surface? One centimeter millimeter below? No, that's below the surface. Two? No. Zero. Zero millimeters below means that's at the surface, meaning to solve this question, we plug in zero for t. Zero over 12, and you can do this in Desmos, I'll do it as well that way. Zero over 12 is 0 0.5 to the zeroth power, or anything to the zeroth power is one. One times 500 is 500. Now we can double check just for fun. We've got 500 times 0.5 to the zero over, oh yeah, zero over 12. So there you go, 500 double verified. That's how you do it. Okay, next. The graph of the rational function, ooh, rational function, amazing. I talked about this in my formulas video. I hope you guys check that out. Y equals f of x. Which of the following is the graph of f of x plus 5? So what type of transformation is this? When I add 5 onto the function value, it's a vertical transformation up by 5. So what does that look like? Let me show you. Do, do, do. So we can take each individual point and translate it up by 5. So I got a nice point here. So the new one would be, it's at 3, so it's going to go up to 8. I got a nice point here at 1. That's going to go up to 6. And I got another nice point here at 9. What is it? How much is up by 5? 9. That's going to go up to... Why am I... My brain is malfunctioning. 14. So the new funk curve should be like this with those three points. So we've got 9, 14 instead of 9... Uh, I'm sorry. Not 9. 1, 14. Excuse me. And we've got here 3, 8. And we've got here 9, 6. Okay, now let's look at the graphs. That one looks like it went down. No, it's got to be this one. Okay, so 1, 14 is off the grid, but, th but that makes sense. It's probably there. 3, 8, that lines up. And 9, 6, that lines up. It's got to be D, right? 
Really, if you verify two points, you're probably golden. I was just going to do three just for, for the heck of it. Okay, 15. The given equation relates to positive numbers P, N, and C. Which equation correctly? So, okay, those are isolating quantities. We're just isolating C. You notice that here. You can kind of ignore the rest of it. So first, I'm going to divide both sides. Oh, let me just go back to black here. Actually, let's write it out. So P equals N times 19 minus C. Divide both sides by N. Divide both sides by N. Boom. Now I got P over N is equal to 19 minus C. What I'm going to do here, I the... I could subtract 19 and then multiply by negative one. Easier, I think, is going to be, I'm going to add C to this side. And then I'm going to subtract P over P over N. So C equals 19 minus P over N. Okay. And, and we got that option as D. That's how you do it. All right. Uh, let's see if there's a way that we can verify. Yeah, P and N are both 19. We should get C is equal to zero. P and N are both 19. I mean, no, P would, C would equal 18. P and N are both 19. C would equal 18. That does work for the original equation. It wouldn't work here. Wouldn't work here. Wouldn't work here. Okay. Hope you, hope you caught that little verification method I just used by plugging in values and making sure we get the same values for the modified version as the original. The length of each edge of a box, which is a rectangular prism, Actually, this looks like a cube because it says every edge is the same. It's 29. Okay, each side of the box is in the shape of a square, so it's a cube. The box does not have a lid. Oh, no lid. What is the exterior surface area without a lid? Now, normally what we would do is we do 29 times 29. That's the area of one face. And then we multiply it by 6, right? That's how we get surface area of a cube. Six faces all the same. But... We're excluding the lid, meaning we're excluding one of the faces. So instead, I'll multiply it by 5. Let's do that in Desmos now. And it said square inches, just making sure I didn't miss anything with the units. Usually, if they are going to modify the units, they're going to bold it. So I felt pretty safe about that, but I'm still double-checking. So 29 times 29 times 5 is equal to 4,205. 4,205, that's how you do it. What is the sum of the solutions to the given equation? I'm going to show you how to do this by hand and by using Desmos. So first I'm going to, I always isolate the absolute value first. So X minus nine absolute value is equal to 63 minus 45, which is, what is that? 18, right? So 18 equals X minus nine absolute value. Then we, I say we bifurcate, meaning we split it into two different equations. The first is as is, you just remove the absolute value. The second one, you remove the absolute value, but you negate the other side. So these are the two options. So now we add nine, X equals 27. We add nine, X equals negative nine. So the sum of the two solutions is 29 plus negative seven, which is 18. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it in Desmos. So what I like to do is I like to graph the left side of the equation as one function and the right side as another one but here since it's a constant we have to say y equals 63 and we see where they intersect okay so we got to zoom out and they intersect when x equals negative 9 that's one of my solutions and 27 that's the other one and then I add those together if you want to do it in Desmos we can as well and there it is 18 boom done see but like I don't know what's faster you know by hand or by Desmos so you can kind of pick based on your comfort level with this work. What is the value of tangent of 92 pi? What? I can literally just do this on it. Oh, the reason why it won't be as easy on Desmos is because um, you know, it won't come out as a radical. So this, we can use our little bit of knowledge of the unit circle. Um, 92 divided by three, wait, does that go in? No, it doesn't. So it's 92 pi thirds, ugh. So this we're gonna have to come up with the, we, we're going to have to basically, I talked about the unit circle, by the way, on my formulas video. So you, you can reference that for this question. I'm going to show you a couple ways to do it. Actually, you can do this in Desmos. I'm going to show you, but first let's do this. So 92 pi over three, obviously this is not on the unit circle. That's huge. So what we can do is we can subtract multiples of two pi, or in this case, common denominator, six pi thirds. We can multiply as many of these as possible until we get it between zero and two pi. So, you know, I could do 72, what should I do? Um, six goes into 96, it goes into 90. So if I multiply it by 15, that would be negative 90 pi over three. I hope this is making sense. If you guys remember how to get uh, 
not a reference angle, but this is a coterminal angle, okay? So as long as I subtract by even, by nice whole number multiples of two pi, I'm gonna get an equivalent coterminal angle. So 92 pi minus, again, two, 30 pi, which I just made 90 pi over three, is gonna be two pi thirds. All right, so now what are we trying to do? We're trying to do, tan this is the same as saying, what is tangent of two pi thirds, okay? So now if we remember the unit circle, here's pi thirds, here's two pi thirds, okay? And two pi thirds has that same reference angle as um, pi thirds. It's the same thing, right? Because the reference angle is the distance from this down to the x-axis. So it's the same as taking pi thirds, but remember tangent of two pi thirds, the second quadrant tangent is negative in the second quadrant. So I already know the positives are out. Goodbye, goodbye, it's one of these two. Okay, so now the question is at pi thirds, which is the same as 60 degrees, you know, what are the X and Y values? So if we remember, sine is the Y value, cosine is the X value. So sine of 60 is rad three over two. Cosine of 60 is one half. So the question is, and again, tangent is Y over X. So it's rad three over two divided by one half. <laughs> this is so much work. Uh, probably using decimals would have been way easier. So that's just, uh, it's like multiplying by two. So it's just rad three. And again, it's negative. So A is the answer. Now I'm gonna show you perhaps what I should have done, I guess probably would have been easier. So make sure we're in radiance mode, which we are. You see, click that right there. And it says tangent of 92, 92 pi over three. And we get this number and we already see it's negative 1.732. Now the question is, and you already know it's a negative. So the question is, which one is it? So now we just type in the answers. Maybe I should have done the square root of three divided by three. And that's wrong, right? 0.577. And then what about just square root of three? And there it is, 1.732. Obviously it's negative, so there you go. Verified, A is the winner, done. All right, 19. Four questions left, but we got 60 minutes. We got plenty of time. Which uh, expression is equivalent to this? What? Oh, got it. Okay, so looking at this and looking at this, they made it have common denominators. So 42A over K, and they all are over K, so I gotta get that one over K. So it's currently 42 a k over one. So I'm gonna multiply by k over k. So it gives me k squared. So then we've got 42 a <clears throat> plus 42 a k squared over k. And that's the answer, but they don't have that. So they, it looks like they factored 42 a out. So we got 42 a and then times one plus, pull it out of that is one plus k squared over K, and that should be the answer, 42A over K. And they just changed the order, which, which is allowed, so D is the winner. That's how you do it, hope that made sense, done. Number 20, the graph of the end, I'm gonna answer questions as soon as I'm done, I just need to be fully focused, make sure, give my full attention to the test. The graph of the given equation circle plane, point AB lies on the circle, um, which of the following is a possible value for A, okay. Mm hmm. wait a minute, this is weird because it's only given a possible value for A. Oh, I know how to think about this. Okay, and I, by the way, I can, let's just graph it in Desmos, actually. This is gonna make a lot more sense, and this is actually a great use of Desmos, but we could also do it by hand, too. This will just be quicker. So x plus four squared, plus, and this is why Desmos is amazing. You don't have to isolate y. You just plug it in as is. It's so great, okay. So you'll notice 121 square root of that is 11. So this should have a, a radius of 11 and it and the center is at negative 4, 19. And we know that from our circle equation, right? It's the opposite of that, opposite of that. That's my x, y of the center, okay? But what we're really doing here is we're looking at where, you know, where does this go to the most left? Negative 15. That makes sense because the radius is 11. It's gonna go back to negative 15 and it's gonna go up to 11, plus that uh, negative four, which is seven. So my range is gonna be between negative 15 and seven. I'm just gonna write that here. This is a coordinate, it's gonna show up as a coordinate, but just think about that as the possible values for um, being on the circle. X has to be negative 15, because look, look at all these points, right? It's greater than, they're all, the X values are greater than negative 15 or less than seven, okay. So this is less than negative 16, out. 
This is greater than 7. Couldn't be out. This is greater than 7, 19. Couldn't be out. The only one that's in the mix is negative 14. And I'll show it to you. When x equals negative 14, right there, there's our points. Negative 14, whatever that is, or negative 14, whatever that is. But the point is, negative 14 is the only viable x value, which is the a value, you know, the x value being on the circle. That's how you do it. Boom, done. 21. A right rectangular prism has a height of 9 inches. Do, 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 do. Right rectangular prism is basically a box. And the height is 9 inches. The length of the prism's base is x inches, which is 7 more than the width. So let's make that, oh, so then the width is x minus 7, right? And which function v is the volume of the, okay. Volume equals length times width, time, or width times length, whatever, times height. There it is. Uh, 9x times x minus 7. D is the winner. Boom, done. That's it. Um, yeah, just make a nice graph and label it correctly, and you're good to go. It shouldn't be too difficult. The function f is defined by this. Let's write it out. You see, we got tons of time left for module one. And I've been, you know, slowing down, explaining it multiple ways, and we still have a surplus. Where A and B are constants in XY, the graph of FX passed through the point. Okay, so we got two points. 24, zero, and F of 24 is positive. 24 is, I'll just say positive. Okay, um, let's plug in. Okay, so I don't know what these are. Wait, wait, wait. Does, yeah, I don't really know anything yet, but I'm always going to start with this and plug and chug. So I know that when x is negative 24, the function value is 0. So watch this. Function value is 0 when x is negative 24. Okay, so obviously a can't be 0, but it doesn't even matter. Okay. So I can divide both sides by A. I can solve for B here. So divide by A, and I get 0 equals radical negative 24 plus B. We don't even have to go much farther, right? I could square both sides and do my thing. But you know that the only way this is going to work is if B is equal to 24. It has to. <clears throat> okay? And so now we know that F of X is equal to A times square root of X plus 24. Now, we also know that F of 24 is negative. Hmm. Well, that means A has to be negative because that would be that would be F of 24, or I'll just say Fx to find the function value. When X is 24, A rad 48, they're saying this is negative. So if that's negative, that means A has to be negative, but that there's not an option here. Um, a could still be greater than B and still be negative 23, negative 22, okay? So it's neither of those. So it's got so it's, it's got to be one of these two. This is a weird question. Very interesting, though. Okay, so it's saying f of 0 is 24. Let me, let me graph it. Let me visualize this for a second. Hold on. Oh, wait. I got a genius idea. Watch this. Here. We're going to use Desmos. So f of x equals a square root x plus, and we said b is 24, and we're going to add a slider. So I already said that we already know that a has to be, so negative 24 is 0, right? That's what we wanted. And we already said that <clears throat> a has to be negative because f of 24 is negative. So right now, f of 24 is positive. So we know it's got to be negative. So which of the following must be true? They said f of 0 is Wait a minute. Well, f of 0, if it's one of these two, it would have to be negative 24, not 24. It's got to be b, but why does it have to be? Hold on, let me think about this for a second. Make sure I didn't un misunderstand this. Give me a one second. I, I imagine b is the only one that makes sense, but... Okay. A is defined by, oh, actually, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What am I saying? B, I said B was 20, did I say B was 24 or negative 24? Hold on. Yeah, I said B is 24. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Let's back it up here. We know that B is 24 and we know that A is negative. So A is less than B. 
Never mind. That's the only thing we absolutely know. <laughs> Sorry, I thought that uh, I thought B was. It, I got mixed up. So here, when I I should have written it out. So I wrote it in there, but I should have said explicit. Oh, I did write it here. Look, B is equal to twenty four. So I should have written my workout better. That's what threw me off. So <clears throat> f of zero could be negative twenty four. By the way, if I extend this down, right, you can see that it could be negative twenty four. It definitely can't be this. It could be negative 24, but it didn't have to be negative 24. Now, can A be greater than B? No, because we already said A has to be negative, so it can't be greater than 24. Does A have to be less than B? Yeah, it has to be. Because if B is 24 and A is negative, it's, it's less. All right, there we go. We got that one. Okay, seven minutes left. Now, normally, I would obviously check my work, but we're not going to do that. Um, we're going we're gonna to check it at the end. And I'll see if I get anything wrong. Now that's the end of our stream today. So let me let me do this, and I'm gonna hit save and exit. So I'll show you how to do that in case you need to like pause in the middle of a test as well. So we're gonna close. So let's save and exit. Okay, boom. There we go. So we got that. We're done. We're good to go. Uh, let me see if we got any questions or comments. Meanwhile, before I jump off, so I'm taking the SAT next. Ooh, next Tuesday. Do you think it'll be tougher? this time also i heard calculators are allowed for the whole test will the questions be harder because of this so at, so let me let me answer your question first chris module one as you can see is i wouldn't say it's it's that much harder than the first sat easier in a lot of ways module two when you get to the harder module because remember it's adaptive so if you get everything right or you do well on module one you're going to get the hard module two now that I would say module two, especially the last four or five questions are usually gonna be harder than anything you've seen on the previous version of the you know the paper SAT. But other than that, I would say it's pretty on par. Um, okay. I'm also doing the same test now. This is great. This is the first time logging in when you're alive. Hey, from Kenya, what's up? Welcome, welcome to the stream, yeah. Well, I guess what is happening next Tuesday then this sounds like an in-school SAT. So maybe what I'll do is I'll line up the second module of this test on Monday. So it'll be the day before or Sunday, one of the two. So make sure to check back, especially if you're taking this test soon. Uh, make sure to subscribe so you see the notification. And that's it, guys. For those of you who have joined on live, thank you so much for joining. If you could click that like button, it would massively help out the channel. We're trying to rack up engagement so we can keep spreading the word because I still believe that this is 100% the best resource when it comes to SAT and ACT math in particular. So make sure to, to do that if you can. It takes a second. I would really appreciate it. And last, I want to end on one more time. If you haven't checked out the SATCrashCourse.com, the description, the link is in the description below with a 20% off discount for the best digital SAT resource out there, right? A lot of changes have happened in the test prep world, and there's new players in the game, and you want to make sure not to go to just the, the people that kind of used to be known, right? Now is a new day and we've collaborated. I've created the product with them. I've made put my video explanations on there, which I think are the best in the business. So hopefully you can check it out, <clears throat> sign up and prepare yourself as uh, strongly as possible. That's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for joining and I will see you in the next video.